Cool. So, hello everyone. Um, I'm Ethan, and this is Bilal, and we are the developers of Frankenstorm, which is a maze-building tower defense game based around the idea of a mad scientist trying to protect his experiments from an angry mob. Bilal's going to start off a new game for us and show you how this all works. So the premise for this tower defense is that there's only one type of tower and after each, after each wave, we can make a choice that can power up our towers, but every choice also powers up our enemies. Now, we can see here there are three switches which are powering up the shield over our monster over here. Bilal's job is to build a maze that will stop the angry mob that's coming from getting to those switches and then getting to our experiment. So to begin with, he's got some wires and some towers so that he can build this, this maze. And after we see a wave of enemies come, we can have a look at our choices for the next wave. Now this colorful line here shows where the enemy is going to walk. Tricky one. Not sure how I want to maze this. Now Bilal's our programmer and um, tower defense extraordinaire. And I'm the artist and animator. I do all the visuals and Bilal does all the stuff that makes it work. So yeah, we get some choices at the end of each wave. Here's an example. Um, and you can see at the bottom here, we've got the penalties. So these are both increasing the enemy's maximum life, uh, one of them much more than the other. And then you've got the, the way it actually powers up your towers. This is all basic stuff at the moment. It's just basic stats, but you'll have more interesting kinds of effects show up later, which can even change the type of the enemy or tower. But now I'll keep the safe one. Uh, I need to build more towers because I just started a new game. So, yeah. Uh, waves are pretty quick and we just cycle through. So this time I can take a doodad, which will make me powerful at any time. I can hit S to see the active stats. So I can see, oh, but that much uh, extra hit damage. It starts at 20, so plus three is actually pretty significant. Uh, yeah. This time around, I'll probably keep the extra wires so I can grow my maze. Put some more wires around like that. Yesterday, Bilal managed to get up to wave 120 on the stream, and he was beginning a new game. Um, as you play this game more, you can start to build up your defenses going into the match. All of these choices that you make through the game, the doodads or um, gadgets or masterpieces that you choose, you can opt to salvage some of those for your next run at the end. Now, at the moment, Bilal's going in with a clean slate, I think, as you would for a new game. That's right. But as you play more, each time each time you fail, um, you get some options to beef up your defenses for next time. And it's quite a challenging game. Personally, I find it very hard to get beyond wave 40 or so. Um, so please jump on, have a go. Let us know where you get up to. Um, this is our demo so we can collect some feedback. So we'd love to hear from you guys if you do have a go, what wave you got up to, anything you'd like to see more of or anything that you think could be improved. We'd love to hear from you. Sure. And just here, I want to talk about uh, one of the more interesting kinds of enemy penalties I've got. So here I've got to do that, which has a chance to change the type of enemy that's spawned entirely. So here it's changing to a hawk that flies over my wires. You can imagine that being pretty pretty devastating in a tower defense that's all about amazing. But since I'm on stream, you know what, let's go for it. <laughs> uh, I'll probably readjust my tower positions. So I avoid, I avoid the hawks like the plague. 
As soon as the Hawks arrive, that's when I lose, usually. Oh, Depending oh. on the choices you get and the placement of the switches each game, which are random, um, your strategy can be quite different each time. You can also choose to go a certain way if you want to play a particular type of game. So, Bilal, have you got a particular strategy here? Are you, are you going for a Hawk match or um, are you just taking it as it comes? I'm going for Hawks now. Uh, it's because it popped up, so I'm like, you know what? It's Hawk time. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's what's happening nice. right now. Uh, but it's already really a struggle, actually. I'm worried about it. <laughs> Good enough more than you can chew? Yeah, straight away. The Hawks, I see they're flying. Oh, they're down fine. already. Yeah. That Hawks. looks like a run I'd do. <laughs> the Hawks were standing among the, the enemies. I needed to probably change my maze there because the towers weren't even attacking them. Um, but yeah, here's what Ethan was talking about. Once the game ends, you have a chance to salvage them. I didn't get anywhere that time, so I don't have nearly enough salvage. Uh, like the cheapest one here cost eight, but I only got one because I, I didn't last one at all. But that's good. That gives us a chance to start another game. Um, which is cool. And if you're watching okay. along, feel free to um, ask us questions or give us a challenge. If you want Bilal to, to try something in particular, let us know. Yeah, and on the note of challenge, I'm, I am playing Nightmare Difficulty on uh -huh. stream. So uh, that's part of the reason it's a lot harder than normal. Uh, normally, you wouldn't want to play Nightmare on a fresh uh, setup. You'd want to get some good salvage first. Uh, but, you know, I'm on stream and it would be good if I, my games don't take super long so i thought what the hell let's do it <laughs> uh, so maybe i won't go hawks this time <laughs> probably a good idea yeah see how far you can get on a on a sensible run a nightmare uh, i'm just trying to loop these two switches together so that's part of the the more advanced advanced amazing strategies uh because they always go to the switches you know set order you can use that to your advantage and force them to run in and out of your maze multiple times so in this case uh because they have to go to this switch first and then to that switch second if i keep these two in the maze and this one outside it means they have to go in and out and in and out again uh, which is you know quadruple effectively the length of your maze it's super beneficial Now, at the moment, we're only seeing the, the standard angry mob baddies. Depending on each of these choices, you can see down the bottom for each choice there's some red text, and that tells us what the effect on the enemy is going to be. Now, some of these, like this one here, will just add to our enemy resistance, but then others will completely change the type of enemy. Like that one. That one's completely changing it to um, I don't think I... I'll try to make the game last a bit longer this time. I won't, I won't <laughs> go it. straight for the enemy effects. Um, now, often wires and towers can be a safe choice because they don't have a negative impact on your your enemies. They don't power up the enemies. Is that correct, Blau? Uh Yep, that's right. So we don't want to punish you every single wave. So <laughs> we'll use some reward types to give you a break. And uh, it could be a breath of fresh air. So another two have pretty nasty effects. And be like, woo, that's the bullet there. <laughs> Um, so, but they become less off frequent as you get later in the game. So, a, bit of a, a struggle in that regard. Ooh, that's a strong one. So, here's an interesting one. Enemies have a chance when hit to gain speed, so they kind of start sprinting for a little bit. Uh, so, you've got these chance based effects happening. But this is actually a really strong uh, gadget. It gives minus max life, which is one of my favorites. Um, so, so maybe I'll try to go a minus life build. Like if I can stack a lot of minus life and completely avoid plus life, uh, which can be tricky. Like this one gives plus life here. Uh, but if I can somehow avoid that and stack this up as high as I can, that could be a really powerful strategy. So I might give it a go at this, uh, but you know, I'm taking on this, uh, sprint chance when I get a lot more towers, I was going to 
happen pretty much all the time. So you're going to have permanently sprinting enemies, essentially. But let's see. Let's lean into it and see how far we can take this. You can see I can preview the rewards while playing. Um, so that speeds up the decision making process, hopefully. Definitely want more wires. A maze is short. Got a good number of towers at least. Oops. But these are my favorite kinds of uh, roles at the moment. So you've got a weird situation where you get a positive effect which cancels out the negative effect. And so compared to these two, uh, well, actually, this is a, another example. Uh, same thing. Lucky I got two of them in the same role. So. There's a lot of things which make you feel like, oh, that was a lucky roll, or uh, sometimes you get the opposite situation where you get three tough ones. So uh, yeah. it's, it's up to the RNG gods, as, <laughs> as they say. Um, so I'll take this one. It's my favorite time. And Bilal, do you have a, a favorite masterpiece or favorite doodad that you always go for, or do you like to keep it fresh each time? Um, if I had my salvage set, I probably would have some favorites, but I keep <laughs> normal progress. It doesn't help. Um, so I keep it pretty fresh. I try to make every game a bit differently. Uh, yeah, that's just me. Uh, nice. What about you? Have any? Well, as, as I've mentioned before, I get caught up more with going for what looks cool instead of what's um, actually effective. So I tend to like using the stun or the, um, or the lightning strikes, the coup de grace. Okay, they're both actually really good, so can't go wrong with them. <laughs> uh, so you see I'm readjusting the position of my towers now that my base is getting bigger. I want to keep my towers in a position where they can attack the enemy as much as possible, uh, minimize downtime I suppose. Uh, so this game, a lot of this game is about optimization. Bilal, do you have your headset, um, your little headphones with you? Wondering if they might help us hear you a bit better. I'll give them a go. It will help. All right, what options have we got here? We can go towers, which means we don't have any negative effects on our enemies. Intense doodad of sparks, which increases our hit damage. Or a potent doodad, which decreases our enemy's resistance, but increases their speed. Let's see. I think... Uh, I, I don't want to take the uh, life because I'm going on minus life build and that would kill it out. Uh, it's a lot harder to get minus life than it is for the penalties to get plus life. So if you, if you really want to try the minus life build, you've got to avoid it. Like it's like uh, tongue in cheek considering COVID going around. <laughs> so I think I'll take the safe option, go to the towers here. I don't know if I want to go plus speed yet. We'll see what it'll get forced into uh, later. Because when you start seeing things like masterpieces, which are much more powerful uh, do that, they also have much more powerful penalties. And sometimes you might want to wait to see which one of those you get, and then you can adjust your strategy in accordance. Uh, it's a hard choice. Probably take this one. The good thing about enemy resistance is it is something that you can get like here uh, as a minus, so you can cancel it out. Whereas things like dodge are irreversible. If you get some dodge, uh, that's just going to pile up and up and up. And if you get it too high, it's going to it's going to bury you. Interesting. Um, whereas enemy resistance, you are able to slowly try to wind it back down. So it's something I'm a bit more comfortable with taking. Um, but on the other hand, if you get it to a really high number, if you start getting close to 50, 60, 70 percent, that's going to spill game over because some of them hit almost no damage on the enemies. If they get 100 percent resistance, they literally take zero damage. So uh, it's kind of like how close, uh, how fine a line you want to tread. Here's an example of a masterpiece. Uh, this one's called Snow Day. You can see it makes everything slower, both the enemies and my towers. In this case, it makes the enemies more slow than my towers. But you've got this uh, penalty, which is a little bit savage. 7% life per second is a huge 
amount of regeneration. Especially if you're slowing them down, that means they're going to take even longer to go through your maze, and that gives them more time to regenerate. So I'm not sure. But what other choices do I have? We've got Hawks again. <laughs> do I want to change this to another Hawk game? I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's go for it. What, what's the worst that can happen? Awesome. This maze is a bit better for Hawks. Because um, they come through twice. Um, this time we've got another coup de grass. So coup de grass doesn't really work with the max. Uh, I'm going minus max life. Oh, you know what? Let's do it. I want to just show off the lightning. I'll put my. Well, we got one hawk in the mix, eh? Cool. So, I'm just going to do something a little cheeky. It's a little trick I have when you're dealing with hawks. I like to separate the hawks from the enemies. So I draw like a big long line here. What that's going to do, uh, it's going to make the enemies take a longer route before they reach my maze. And I can use that time to uh, hopefully kill the hawks before the enemies even get into my maze. Do all See, towers focus around, on? Towers shooting them. Move my sniper. Do all towers so, focus on the first yeah, baddie? Yeah. Oh, I'm not, not sure if the can back. hear me. That's the coup de grace in effect. So just to show what that's doing again. So it's giving my towers a chance to just instantly kill enemies which are below a certain amount of life. Um, that, and when that happens, you'll see a nice. Uh, Ethan, are you there, mate? I just have yeah, a... can can you not hear me? Ah, how about now? Okay, I hear you now. Hear me now? Ah, cool. I've been asking questions for a while and you, <laughs> you didn't respond. I only just realised you couldn't hear me. I wasn't ignoring you, I promise. No worries. <laughs> sure you weren't. Um, cool, sorry. So what questions were you asking? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, ah, now I, I did ask a moment ago um, when you were talking about the hawks. Um, so, do all of the towers target the closest enemy, or do they target the first in line, or how does that work? So they target the one that's closest to them when they're looking for a new target. If that makes sense. Once they find their target, they'll kind of stick with it. Uh, ah, interesting. For so, as long as they can. So having the hawks come first will mean that it'll keep targeting the hawks even when other enemies come past yeah until that hawk runs out of attack range then it has to look for another new target and so it'll pick the one close to it nice but yeah i just killed two hawks uh before the enemies came so that's kind of what i want here i'll uh, isolate them with the sniper gun. And you got some zigzags happening yeah nice it's helping build that distance i think that's about all i'm gonna fit um, so now I might <laughs> go back to actually trying to build the maze. Maze or horse? If I'm going to double down on horse, then I don't really need my maze. Um, I'm a pretty strong choice. So if you've just joined us, this is Frankenstorm Tower Defense. It's a roguelite maze building tower defense where we're building this maze to stop all of these angry villagers from coming and destroying our experiments. Now Bilal's going for a, a certain type of game here that will turn a lot of the enemies into hawks, although we've also got a lot of angry villagers with shields at the moment. All of the decisions Bilal makes between rounds will affect his enemies and his towers. So he has to make careful choices about how different modifiers will stack for the enemies and for his towers. If you're watching along, please grab the demo, give it a crack and let us know what wave you can get up to. Bilal's playing here on Nightmare Mode, which I can't get very far on at all. He's up to wave 25 and looking strong. So let us know how you go. What to do with my wires, honestly. All right, these hawks, as, as mentioned previously, ignore our maze completely. They can fly over the top of it. So having even one hawk in the mix changes the game quite considerably. 
Now we've got yeah. some options here. We can choose wires, which is always the safe choice, as it doesn't it doesn't modify our enemy. What are you going for here, Bilal? Yeah, uh, yeah. The wires always give us an opportunity to make our maze a bit snazzier, making our enemies take a longer route to their doom. Uh, I'll just uh, extend the maze upwards here. Starting to texture from my maze. That's very interesting. Now, each wave of enemies has to go to each of these switches, which will try and reduce power to Dr. Frankenstein's shield that he's got protecting his experiment. So they need to go to all three of these switches in order so that they can shut down his defences and then storm his experiment. So just rebuilding that weird thingy to keep the distance, uh, let the hawks arrive first. So I've got a bit of a longer maze for my normal guys, and the hawks are still kind of arriving first. Quite oh no! Oh. <laughs> that was a fail. So you see, I didn't. Uh, I stuffed up the maze there. And I didn't separate the hawks from normal guys properly. But that's cool. That gives us a chance to start another new game. Have we got enough for any salvage? Not yet. Uh, still not enough. Uh, if I get three more so uh i'd have enough for the cheapest one but it looks like i didn't get any cheap ones this time around i got all pretty high quality do that so they're all quite expensive on the salvage train uh, but if i had enough i'd be able to pick some i hit the salvage button and then uh this menu that you're going to see in a second would come alive and you get a whole new section here which lets you kind of build a, a longer term strategy uh, so maybe I wanted to try hawks in the long term when I could actually salvage doodads that spawn hawks. And, uh, yeah, that, that could be one thing. And I could specifically counter them in my salvage build and see how far I can get like that. Um, but, yeah, I haven't saved up enough points. Ooh, this is a wonderful maze. Uh, wonderful set of switches, I mean, because these two are really close to each other. Uh, so I can just wrap around together. So while Bilal is a, an avid TD aficionado, um, I've rarely ever, if ever, played one before we started developing this game. So along the way, I've been learning what a tower defense game is. Um, and I find this game quite challenging as a newcomer. Um, the only other one I've played much of is Bloons. This one is super hard compared to Bloons for me. But I'm really enjoying that as you play it, you do get a little bit better each time. You learn how the mazing works. You start coming up with new strategies. So it, it really does feel like a game that's worth playing again. And certainly that salvage adds to that immensely as you can get a little bit further. Your first first few runs might be a bit like some of Bilal's here on Nightmare where you, you don't get far enough to get much salvage. But as you get better at it, you can start getting better and better because you can add those those salvage options into your set before you begin. Any strategies in mind this time, Bilal, or are you just taking it as it comes? Uh, I was taking it as it comes, but I did get a pretty early snow day. In fact, that was my first do that. Nice. So it looks like I want to go a slow strategy, stack as much slow as I can and avoid speeding them up. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to go for. But you can see the penalty it's got. The enemies get stronger and stronger after each wave. Uh, sorry, uh, more and more resistant after each wave. And that's really dangerous because if they get too much resistance, then they'll start taking almost no damage at all from hits. And it's kind of like suddenly you lose just because your towers aren't doing damage anymore. So that's something I've got to watch out for. I need to make sure that I don't give them any more extra resistance because that might get to that point even faster. I kind of have to keep check on that and make sure because it keeps going up wave after wave, I need to keep kind of bringing it back down, keeping it in a control range. Now, is resistance one of those attributes that can be reversed, or once you've reduced their resistance, so you're stuck with that? So it can be reversed, and yeah, I'm definitely going to have to focus on reversing it in this game, but otherwise it's just going to keep on. Uh, I'll definitely lose if it reaches a certain point. I'll let it go beyond a certain point. 
you see, sometimes you get weird readouts like this one where you're reversing it on the same readout, so minus 6 plus 6 is 0. Uh, they're kind of my favorite readouts at the moment, but I don't know. I don't know if I should keep them in the game design sense, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, that's that's something we'll wait and see. Yeah, I'm going to adjust my maze here uh, to make it a little bit tighter. And you can always opt to reclaim all if you want to completely do your maze again. I was, I was mentioning to Bilal that almost every time I think, yeah, I'll try a different strategy, I lose immediately. <laughs> Um, but there's always an option to, to try something totally different. Build from scratch. That's what happened to me last game, wasn't it? <laughs> Is that when we missed your your defeat? Is that how it went down? Uh, uh, no, I mean, just the one right before this one. Uh, with the horse. Ah. Rebuilt my maze. Uh, tried to adjust the light. We did backfire. <laughs> <laughs> So this game, I've got some plus life going on, so enemy life is going up, and I've got to be careful uh, with something like this. So the brute's like the main slave, the main guy, uh, and he's got massive extra life. So the concern if I get brutes while I've also got plus max life is that they're just going to be enormous and uh, unhandleable. So I probably want to avoid brutes. In this case, uh, and th th this choice was easy because I had towers. So the early game, you usually have safe choice. Uh, but maybe later I'll be risky. Again, and here's another one: enemy max life regeneration. That's something I can use here because I'm increasing their life, and this heals them for a percentage of their life. Uh, that's 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 a great combo for the enemy. So if I want them to kill me faster, I can combo <laughs> that for them. If you're a glutton for punishment. Um, Bilal, we're having a bit of trouble hearing you. Um, do you have... Is maybe oh. your noise cancellation turned up a bit high or anything on Skype? You're cutting in and out a bit. Oh, no. Uh, I'll see... What are your settings? Microphone noise cancellation. I'll turn the noise cancellation off completely. Cool. See how that goes. I just click that. Hopefully it'll do something. Cool. Keep going and we'll see if that... Cool. Improves the situation. All right. If you've just joined us, we're having a look at Bilal the programmer playing Frankenstorm Tower Defense. Bilal's pretty impressive at his tower defenses. So while you might be watching, thinking, "Oh, he's doing a terrible job. He's only at wave 16. Um, this is super hard, and I've I'd be dead by now." So give it a go. See if you can do better. Um, there's a lot of strategy involved in this one. We're trying to build our maze to keep our angry villagers running around near our towers as long as possible so that they can't ruin our experiment. Now, Bilal's mousing over some of the choices that he can make after this wave, which will beef up his towers a tad, but also affect his enemies. So he's got to carefully consider what's going to help him and what's going to disadvantage him in these choices. This what one's are we going for? One. Sorry. Because uh, this, this one here, 21% attack radius, is pretty massive. Uh, and it only comes on gadgets, so that's actually pretty rare. But the other ones are really strong too. Uh, I've already discussed how I have to keep reducing their resistance if I want to survive this one, and this has a really strong resistance reduction. Uh, so I don't really know. Uh, I might just close my eyes and just pass <laughs> clear. Oh, all right. Oh, crap. I pressed oh, X. What have you done? I pressed the <laughs> save and exit button by accident. Sorry. Uh, but, yeah, we've got save and exit. So there you go. Just freaking the feature. It. Totally intentional. Um, you can pause and come back later. Perfect for you right. gamers with kids. And you need to go and make a sandwich. It won't ruin your game. So yeah, I increased their max life some more. It's plus ten percent, pretty dangerous. Um, but go and stack that damage and counteract that minus resistance that they're gaining over time. Now another factor in making these choices is that you can only choose to salvage the doodads and gadgets that you've actually salvaged or that you've actually chosen throughout the match. So we had a, a player. Um, 
talking to us earlier that was saying he desperately wanted to salvage a particular doodad, but if he chose it now, it might destroy his game. So sometimes you need to <laughs> make a choice on what you want to have next time and whether that is more important than what you need right now. Yeah, I played a, a game called Magic the Gathering. Ah, yep. A card game, and they've got something called Draco, where you, before you play, you open some packs of cards and pass them around to the other players. Uh, you do the deck as you're going to the cards and that's what you play. And that has a similar concept where you might want to take something in that deck just because you want to keep it. <laughs> so you don't necessarily want to play it with it right then and there, but you say, oh, I need this card for something else. Uh, oh, we've lost you. Talk again for me, Bilal. I don't have any plus hit damage at all. So you see I've got plus 7%, but this is plus 8 from data percent, so that's like base damage. And that's almost a 50% increase because my towers only hit 20 at the moment, so they've picked up to 28. So that's a huge uh, bonus and even more attack radius. So it's done to stack quite a bit of attack radius, but uh, dodge is another one of those mechanics that we've got to be careful that gets too far. They get pretty far with dodge. Uh, they're just going to start dodging everything. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that helped a lot, that big damage boost, and I think it's going to just do... Uh, I don't know, I don't want to give him shield, because I'm already buffing the impact slot. It's going to be nasty. These are three... This is one where you, should, you have three good choices. Um, so this one is giving them enemy resistance, and it's also going to make them dodge even more, uh, which ain't cool. But... but, but but what else? Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, uh, time to get a double. 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 Thanks, Mob Geeks. I just saw your message in the chat and I gave a response. Uh, yeah, do give the game a go. Let's see, let's see if you can get as far as me. Maybe not on Nightmare. Uh, <laughs> give it a go on normal difficulty. And see yeah, how start normal. Build up those salvage slots. Uh, I don't want to give them more dodge at this stage. This. Uh, this one is probably worth it. Just checking, Bilal. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you louder. Cool. No worries. It's still cutting in and in and out a little bit. Not sure why. Okay. Uh, not sure what I can do about that. I'm no, afraid. that's all right. Keep going. I can understand you well enough. Centipedes oh, getting so much harder to kill after this game. But I'm hanging on. Hanging on. So you can see here there's an interesting effect uh, with amazing where they're coming in and out of my maze multiple times. You can see that with the wire that's going on here. Uh, uh, not the wire, the, the line. So the green line wiggles around, comes in, hits this first switch. They have to leave the maze again and hit the second switch. Come back in the maze again and hit the third switch and then leave again and hit the fourth switch. So they're actually walking the full length of my maze four times. And that's the main reason that I put these switches in. It makes the mazing a lot more advanced. Um, so, yeah, that's what's, that's what's going on there. And the so, switches are in different places every time. So each game's quite different. I think that's so much damage. Bit of enemy speed, but a huge damage boost. It's risky. Uh -huh. Now, Bilal, is, is um, our player Daytime, is he our highest scorer so far? Daytime, um, yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, do we know what wave he's made it up to? 
he reached the point in our previous beta where <laughs> he would have moved the game would uh, crash. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, he, he made it, so to speak, if you want to put it that way. Uh, so. Cool. But we're not sure what our, our best score is for this version yet. There's been a few rebalances and new new additions. Yeah, it's a bit funny as a as a developer trying to play the game. I keep like losing my progress because I'm coming in and out of the game engine. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's an interesting. Um, so we were originally, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can hear me, I should talk about, but I might just think through my answer first. Uh, what was the question below? Uh, Mopdix asked the question um, in the chat, do we have any thoughts on crowdfunding in this game? I think at the moment we don't. Uh, we're planning to release the game uh, at the end of the month actually. So we're not too far off the release. It's just going to be a free game. What the goal here really is, is to explore the concept, see is this a concept that resonates with Power Defense players. And if we get a good response uh, for the launch, then, then we'll definitely be looking to work more on the concept. And that could be the point when we get up to the start line. So we know for sure, like, hey, this works, this works, this this. So, uh, yeah, we can double down on the game for my physical resources. Um, with back speed, that's a lot of back speed. Got more dodge. How much dodge do they have by now? 13 already, but up to 18. Trading a dangerous line in here, but I don't have much choice. I'm just going to type the response to that to play the game in normal speed. You see, <laughs> it's not fast forward. Um, Okay, it looks like you can hear me uh, yeah, on this, so I won't type it out. Um, and yeah, GemTV was definitely one of the inspirations. I played GemTV even before the StarCraft 2 version of Warcraft 3. Uh, that was, uh, I call it Warcraft 3, uh, it's the golden age. And that's definitely something I'm trying to bring back uh, with these. So, um, I've already got some enemy max life, so I'll keep going with that. So it's great that you mentioned that. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, struggling to hear you again, Bilal. Oh, I said there's a second snow day, which is awesome. Ah, nice. Um, and this is a good roll. You see, it slows the enemies a lot more than my own towers. If I look at the first one I got, it was pretty much equal. Towers and enemies slow the same amount. Um, so this is a good one, but 11% dodge is going to take them up to 29. Um, so anyway, we'll go for it. Snow's going to get thicker now, which is uh, my favorite effect. Nice little snow. So it's clear I'm leaning into a, a, a snow build here. So good that I, I think I've got the enemy to lost enemy speed. It's good. If I can stack a bit on the snow, it'll be extremely hard. Struggling to hear you again, mate. Maybe hold that mic a little bit closer. Seemed to work before. Okay. Um, all right, I'll just hold it. Uh, <laughs> the good thing is you you can play the game with one hand, so I can keep one hand going. That's it. Um, would you help find the difference Broke light and broke light. Uh, so still, it's not working this time. Can't hear you, buddy. <laughs> Burma. We're trying without the headphones again. Yeah. Can you hear me when I'm back at the smoke? No, still, still in and out. Not sure what's happening. We could hear you at the beginning. It's gotten worse as we go. All right. What I might do is turn down the volume on the gameplay. I'm not sure if that'll help at all. Oh. Um, so. Yeah, uh, so can you hear me now? Someone else? 
Uh, no, there's no one else in the house, so that's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, okay, it wasn't me. Ah, he's in our Discord. Uh, I've got the Discord muted. Um, okay, so I'll put my earphones back on. We'll figure it out. I'll make it work. All right, take three. Have you got me there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, they can hear me, but not you. Um, pop your game on, and we'll see if they can hear the game. Uh, testing, testing. Okay, but, but not below. All right, no worries. Well, I'll continue. Bilal can keep playing the game, and we'll see what we can do. Um, Alrighty, so if you're just tuning in, people, this is Frankenstorm. Now, I hope people can hear me in the stream. Um, Frankenstorm is a roguelite amazing tower defense game. And Bilal's having a go here on nightmare mode, which is super intense. He's building a maze to stop the angry mob of villagers from coming to destroy his experiment. Now, at the moment, we can see the choices screen, and each of these choices allows allow to power up his towers but also they affect all of the enemies as well so he's <laughs> all right now we've got a I don't know what you guys can hear but I'm just going to keep on talking um, Bilal's going for a a strategy here where he can slow down things. So you can see some snow at the moment. He's used the Snow Day masterpiece, which causes everything to slow down. Now, it also slows his towers down a little bit, but it slows the enemies down more. All right, what have we got here? Injuring Gadget of Potency. Is that what we went with? I missed it. Yeah, yeah. actually, I realized why Andrew can't hear us. Uh, he, can you hear me, Ethan? I can hear you fine, yep. Okay, the reason Andrew can't hear is because he's in the Discord while we're recording from Skype. Aha! Uh -huh. So he's a. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit probably why he's getting confused. So I think I can be. Heard. No worries. So the actual live stream should be hearing you hopefully. I can still see the the the, the line move when it goes. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think I think we're both being heard. Um, but I was a bit confused because I started hearing other random voices and thought, who are these people? Where are they coming from? Um, all <laughs> yeah, good. Cool. We had someone drop into our Discord. We do have a Discord if anyone's interested and wants Fantastic. to uh, follow the development, uh, then you can jump in. We'd love that. Good to have people in the Discord. Um, are you able to turn up your game sound? We can't hear the game much at all now. Okay, yeah, sure. I turned that down and I thought you couldn't hear me. So, <laughs> no worries. Uh, I'll no turn worries. it back up. That's no issue at all. Uh, I'll quickly save and do that. Beautiful to see. We've got 1,500 viewers. Fantastic. Um, now, if you're watching, please grab a copy of the demo, give it a crack, and let us know what wave you can get up to. We're keen to hear any feedback you've got on what we've done so far. Let us know what you like, what you'd like to see more of. This time started off in this game, I said, I probably don't want to go from this. Actually, before I go into that, I just want to point out this nice choice I get here, plus one extra salvage point. Um, so that's that's always a sweet one. It skips you ahead a few waves. Normally, you've got to wait a few waves to find one. And in this case, it's also a really safe choice because I don't want either of these. Uh, they're both pretty bad. So uh, it, it's a beauty. It's like an oasis in the desert. <laughs> Now, as you play, you'll probably start to notice some of the masterpieces and gadgets that you'd like to save up for. And you can only choose to purchase the, the objects that you've chosen during the game. So if you want to be able to purchase it at the end of your run with those salvage points, you need to make sure you choose it during your match. Now, once you start um, adding up some of these, these doodads and gadgets and masterpieces, Every time you start a new game, you can choose to go in. You could start with Snow Day, or you could start with um, Coup de Grass, which are the, the lightning strikes, or the, um, oh, the the stun one, the one that electrocutes them even more. That's my favorite. 
Oh my. So certainly when you're starting out, it's um it's really valuable to get those salvage points so that you can go into your next match a little bit stronger. Keep in mind, Bilal's playing on nightmare mode here, which is super challenging. My best is wave 40 on normal mode, and he's he's doing it quite easily on on nightmare mode already. So if you're new to tower defenses, you might want to jump in at normal mode like me. Um, but if you're quite the beast like Bilal, then go for nightmare. Now, I think we've got one brute in the mix. Most of these enemies are just our standard villagers. Depending on the choices Bilal's made here, it'll make other enemies more probable. Oh, we've got we've got a hound in there. These guys go a lot faster than the average enemy. Not as much life, though. So they tend to get ahead of the pack and get those switches before the other enemies will. I didn't really want the hound that time, but I was stuck looks like you dealt with him fine uh, I've been thinking of rephrasing the term with what's here I call it an end of wave but sometimes <laughs> it's really not <laughs> that's just the nature of the game I'm happy with that but maybe I'll change it to something more ominous <laughs> ah we've got some brutes these big chunky fellas now they move a little bit slower but they take a lot more damage uh, We've got a lot of dodging happening at the moment as well. Yeah, a bit of everything here. Uh, the only thing I'm really trying to avoid is increasing their speed. Uh, just with fail on the hound part. That's not my secret. Uh, this might be the end right now. Yeah, I think this is game over. Wave 43. Not too shabby for night mode with no salvage. Uh, I have enough to salvage just one doodad now, but... Uh, oh! He's down! Uh, what wave did we make? 43. Nothing to be sneezed at on nightmare mode. Yeah, so that's that. Um, Do you oh. want to give it a crack on um, regular mode? Show people what it's like normally? You reckon it might, it might go on... Go on that's for true, it might, it might go on... A, might go uh, in a while. Maybe I these short matches like. are, the, are the way to go. So, so I don't really have any great doodads here, but just to show the salvage system in effect, um, I'm going to just take one. This one's not too bad. Minus 1% enemy resistance with no uh, downsides. I always like the ones with no downsides. Ah, interesting. Uh, so it's a it's not a big one, but uh, I'll take it just to show uh, can't lose. how it works. And... Normally, you, you might want to save up. So the salvage points you can see here, they do roll over for future games. Um, so you can save them up for your next runs and get a bigger, better do that. But in this case, I'll just take this one. And you can see I've equipped it to one of my slots. You've got a limited number of slots. There's no way to increase this. So, um, yeah, that's something to watch out for. Uh, you can, you can get more than that in your set, but then you'd have to switch them out. So if you play a long time, you can start building up multiple strategies and see how that goes. Um, but for now, this is my entire set, minus one resistance. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> All right, I'll re reintroduce again, just in case we've got some new people checking it out. Um, this is Bilal, our programmer and developer, and I'm Ethan. I do the art stuff. And he's kicking off a new match on Nightmare Mode of Frankenstorm. This is a roguelite tower defense game. A amazing tower defense game where we need to build a maze of electric wires. Now these wires have to be connected to that beginning point. There's two points where we can start our wire maze. We can't completely block off the entrance to um, our shield here. And we need to try and make our angry mob of villagers take as long as possible to get through our maze and absorb as much punishment as we can. Now, we've got some towers placed already. Each of these towers are the same as each other. We can only choose one type of tower, but depending on the choices we make, the towers will change over time, and so will our enemies. So let's have a look at the next choice that Bilal makes. Ah, he's opted just to build towers. Towers are a safe choice because we don't have any negatives that come with it. 
let's have a look what's our next choice here we've got the coup de grace and this will give towers 2% chance on a hit to kill an enemy who is below 40% max life but it will also mean enemies have 11% more chance when hit to gain 5% of their max life as a shield so each of these choices we need to weigh up what's it going to give us and what's it going to give the enemy so what are we going for Bilal? I reckon I want to give another shot at the Hawk. Uh, <laughs> another Hawk match? Because this is actually a really good layout for them. See, they, they've got to fly a really long way, all the way to the left, and then all the way to the right, uh, back again. So, yeah. Yes. Now, it's... I forgot to mention that each of the um, enemies need to follow a path to switch all three of these switches, which will power down the scientist's shield. Now, our Hawks, which Bilal's made a choice that's going to mean we get, get some Hawks pretty soon, if we don't already. The Hawks can completely fly over the maze. They just go straight to each one of those switches. So usually we want to avoid them, but it looks like Bilal thinks with this switch layout, the Hawks might actually give us an advantage. They take less damage, so we can kill them easier, but our maze has less power over them. got any hawks yet no nope, still just on our standard enemy so far yeah the hawk chance is still quite low uh so we might not see any of them for a while oh, no. that's that's like the worst case scenario <laughs> I'm forced into something that's not a hawk. Ah. Which isn't what I want at all. I wanted to go double down on hawks. Do the hounds end up... They, they're speedy like the hawks. Can you can you sort of choose a, a hound-hawk situation or do they not mix well together? Hounds are a lot faster than hawks because hawks have minus speed. Hounds have plus speed. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's a big shift there. But I might not have a choice because I won't have a maze. A brute would just straight through it. So, I think i got to go with the hounds. Well, this is going to... I don't think this game's going to last. A hound hawk match. <laughs> Let's see if he gets past wave 12. Uh, I reckon I'll get past 12. That'll be. <laughs> but please, if you're, um, if you're watching, have a, have a go with the demo. Um, it's quite a challenging game to start with, but as you play, you, you do learn with each run. Um, you learn from your mistakes, and you also start to collect some of these gadgets that you can start with next time, so things are a little bit easier. Let us know what what point you got up to. Um, I saw a, a fella streaming this last night, our first stream. Um, he played it for about four hours and had some very cool-looking mazes. Um, so please send us a screenshot of your maze if you have a go. I'd be super impressed if someone can make a picture out of it. I had one the other day that, that kind of looked like a skull with the, the little crisscrossy thing down the bottom for a mouth. But um, usually when I get distracted making fancy-looking mazes, that doesn't help my strategy at all. <laughs> you can try to spell things out, get them to run through words. But, um, yeah, no, I'll be impressed. But you probably won't get very high. <laughs> all right. How are we going with our hawks and hounds? Oh. Oh. It's busted wave. Wave it's like 16. down the hound route. I'm not sure I want to take this to the grass because the whole idea was to have a short maze. Mm. Zap them quickly. Do I want more hounds? Mm. Uh, let's do it. Let's show off the lightning if I get a chance. All right. Oh. So the coup de grass means that some of the enemies will be struck down by lightning as they go. I think anyone who's um, at less than 50% health, is that right, Bilal? Uh, 40. 40, 40. It used to be 50, but I felt like it was a little ah, bit strong. It's changed. So I toned it down a smidge. Have we had anyone get to a second switch yet, or are we just at one? Um, I don't think we've reached the second one. We're close. So again, the enemies have to get each of these three switches before they can go for the end point, which is um, attacking the scientist and his experiment they need to power down the shield by switching each of these switches 
which gives us the opportunity to run them back and forth through our maze multiple times if we're clever. You can see I'm getting pretty quick uh, with my choices because uh, I've got them previewed at the top right. Um, so give us a yeah. tasing gadget. Tasing? But, oh yeah, actually life regeneration is alright because they're not going to, this isn't a long maze run so that's not too bad. That could work. Okay. All right. Have we seen a hawk yet? We seem to have lost our hounds. We're back to I, just standards. I haven't seen a single hawk, uh, but you're you're right. Actually, it is suspiciously few hawks. Seven percent chance. I might keep an eye out. Maybe this is a bug. Under the hook. <laughs> we did. Uh, we definitely saw a hawk. I've seen one before. I picked hounds. I saw a thing. Maybe. Trying to investigate the code here. Oh my goodness, 19% resistance. Um, yeah, that's huge. Ah, he's a hawk. They're coming. Uh, oh. All right, we got a bit of dodge. Two rounds in a row, we took some dodge, but that gave us a whopping minus 30% resistance in just two choices. So that's really strong. Um, so, yeah. What do we get on this time? That's pretty low. But I might, I don't think it's worth using that beautiful enemy resist for. I'll just to go the safe route at the stage. Another hawk in. Not getting far so far. Yep. So I don't, I don't really want explosion radius this game. Uh, explosion radius is great if you've got a really solid maze, you're looping them in a big circle, uh, and they just can't escape, and then they're all running on top of each other. That's when explosion radius means a single hit from the tower is going to hit multiple enemies. But with this, uh, well, the ideal is to have hawks and not a maze, but <laughs> it's not really turning out that way, strangely. <laughs> so, but I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the plan for as long as I can and try to get those hawks. It's not getting any hawks. Oh no, I'm getting less than that. I can't believe I'm saying that. Are you taking that hawk down fast every time? Yeah, I think I've got a pretty good, like, anti-hawk <laughs> It's just a shame I'm not seeing them. Well, this is a tricky one. Do I want enemy effects to occur 23% more frequently? I would see more hawks that way, but also more hounds and more dodges. Mm. Uh, so that one... That's a, as the name suggests, chaotic. It makes everything <laughs> happen more. Uh, the good things and the bad things. Uh, but I do have some good things, so it's going to make those all happen more too. The Novas, the stunts, the Cougar Grass, it's the kill. So, and 10% resistance. Let's do it. Do it. Let's go for the chaos. Uh, shield as well. It's just so powerful. The attack radius is great. The damage is good. I think with this much attack radius, yeah, you see my towers are now like overlapping the end of the maze quite a bit. So I'm going to pull them back a little bit. Just walk away. Uh, so they get more. time. I think that's a big one. Oh, I thought I heard a brute in there. Can't see him though. Must have just been a a deep voiced standard peasant. <laughs> Alright, 
All right, another loop on the maze. If anyone has any questions, uh, jump in the chat. Yeah, hit us with your questions, suggestions, or feedback, and um, please do let us know what your top score is. I think um, leaderboards is something you've got planned for the full version, or is that a is that a maybe? I would really like to do. <laughs> Going to try and get some leaderboards in for you. Yeah. So you can get some street cred for those sweet runs. Remember on the um, on the Steam store in the the community section, you can usually share screenshots in there as well. So if you got a sweet screenshot of your maze, whack it up there. Oh, it's fine. I heard a hawk. I can't see him in there. I mean the this gadget I've got here. Ah. Plus twelve percent more chance. And actually, it's a it's a really good plus ten hit damage too. That's that's like a twenty five percent damage increase. So that's a solid choice. Do you want to maybe slow it down to to two speed so we can see some of these different so baddies? Struggling to even see what's out. going on. <laughs> yeah, they're up. Oh, we've got three hawks now. It's getting hairier. Oh, Wave 40. What was your highest today? Was it about 45 or something? I think I got 55. 55, okay. So, see if we can get up to 60 with this round. Feel free to speed up when you're ready. Just slow slow down for us now and again so we can see what's happening. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay. Speed or life? Uh, I can buff their life for a little. I reckon I can afford that. See those walls? Getting some good stuns in there. Yeah, I'm hearing some fun. That's right. Two switches down. Oh. They might make the third switch this time. Just no, it. not quite. All right, so just reminding viewers, the enemies have to go and turn off each of these switches, which will incrementally power down our shield that's protecting our experiment. Now, so far, we haven't seen them get to the third switch in this match, but they're getting awful close. Once they get to that third switch, they can go for the end zone and take down our monster. Hit damage for enemy resistance. That's a positive trade at the moment. So yeah, that'll be a damage boost. This is a game where you spend a lot of time in maxing free choice. Is this is this going to be of immediate benefit? Is it going to be of long term benefit? Um, so it can get as strategic as you want it to. Uh, I I definitely spent quite a bit of time on that screen myself. Taking the Hawks down. One switch to go, it looks like. Oh, oh that third switch is done. Ah, but they haven't escaped the maze. Uh, actually, this line isn't going to work. This line back, there's not enough space. So I think it's time for me to maze this last one up here. So let's wrap around that. That way. Right, we've got two switches down. So far, they've made it to the third switch, but they haven't made it out of the maze. It looks oh. like they won't this time, but it's getting near the end. So we're at wave 46. I think our best today was 55 below things. Remember, this is on nightmare mode, super hard. For all us regular muggles, there's um, normal mode as well. <laughs> Give that a shot first. Save up your salvage and attack Nightmare with a, a beefed up defense system. I'd love to get five more salvage, but that's probably a bit much of an ask. Having trouble hearing you again, mate. 
I, I'd love to get five more salvage, but that's probably a bit much of an ask. <laughs> Uh, How much have you got down there at the moment? We can't see in this see it during the wave. 13, 13 salvage points down in the bottom left. 18 is the next threshold. Sorry, we're still not hearing you. Oh, no. But I'm sure he's saying, oh, this. It's so oh, close. Oh, it's over. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a little life on him. Oh no. Wave 49, not bad. So what have we got for salvage? 13 points we can spend on one of the doodads that we got during our run. So what do you think? What's what's going to work best for you? I'm personally not a fan of the eight cost ones because they only have one effect. Like, um, this could be a decent one. I mean, it, it outweighs its uh, negative uh, and gives you a bit of a net positive. Yeah, um, that's, that's clever. That's, that's decent value for an eight. Um, so I might go ahead with that one just since we're on stream. But if, you, if you're playing longer term, then you probably want to save up the salvage points. Uh, see the 18s, you, you still only have one penalty, but now you've got two positive effects. So you can get a lot, uh, much better salvage set if you save up for those ones. Um, even more so if you can uh, use it, spend on the 40s. They're very expensive naturally. And then the masterpieces finally are the most expensive at 50. Um, but obviously on stream, I'm not going to be able to save up that much. <laughs> so I'll just get whatever I... Uh, this is this is a good choice for only eight. So I'll take that. Nice. Oh, I just saw a question from Cody. Uh, how does that portion of the game work? So, um, yeah. So you saw I just uh, spent the salvage points I got during play and I salvaged this doodad. And now what that means is uh, it's outside the game now. You see, that, that run ended. It got my high score of 49 on Nightmare. But now I've got it outside the game. I can equip it, and it lasts longer here. Uh, in fact, it lasts forever here, unless I decide to <laughs> delete it. But it's probably not a good idea. Um, so these, when I start a new game, these will be immediately effective, and they'll last the whole game. And you can see there's three tiers. You've got your standard little doodads here. You've got your more powerful gadgets and your masterpieces at the top. So as you save up more salvage, you can build your own set of uh, doodads and gadgets and masterpieces to bring into your future games. And they're going to launch you much further into those games right from the get-go. And it's kind of like a positive feedback loop. So as you get more salvage, you'll get more doodads, which means you get further, which means you get more salvage. And it's like a loop where you're, you're powering yourself up faster and faster. Um, so, so this is a big uh, thing. This is when we say this is a roguelike TD, this is what we mean. Uh, and so this is a sweet metagame. Uh, and we've had some people who've played uh, more than 25 hours and they've got heaps, heaps of doodads. And that's why I had to add this delete feature. They had too many. Oh, wow. Uh, so they were like, is there a way I can get rid of them? Um, so yeah, you, gotten can, that far. you can at that point start building multiple different sets if you want to try. Okay, what's the build like with the lightning rod? What's the build like with Nova cores? So you can uh, really try to set your your personal bests with different strategies, which is sweet. Um, so that's what's going on with the roguelite aspect of this game. Uh, yeah. So what I'll do now, we've got 1,800 viewers, which is beautiful. Uh, we'll probably get started with a new game, but maybe, uh, Ethan, do you want to do a quick reintroduction for any new viewers we've got? Absolutely. Now, do we need to stop at a certain time, or are we good to keep going? Uh, if we've got viewers, then I don't see why we're going. going to stop. Marvellous. <laughs> All right, so if you've just tuned in, welcome. This is Frankenstorm. It's a roguelite tower defence game. Bilal's about to start a new match. Are we going with Nightmare Mode again, Bilal? Yeah, I will be, just so it doesn't go on forever. Awesome. And you're welcome, Cody. Uh, thanks for, for saying that. Awesome. So Nightmare Mode is super hard. Um, if you're just starting out, I recommend Normal. Normal is a bit easier, but still quite challenging, and each match will be quite different. So in this game, we are helping Dr. Frankenstein defend his experiments. We've got a, a mob of angry villagers coming to destroy our monster in the process in this scene we're um just collecting parts for our monster and for some reason 
this angry group of villagers wants to put an end to our science. So this is amazing tower defense. Amazing that is, not an amazing tower defense. Though you also may I think that amazing. it is. <laughs> um, now, we can only build our maze connected to these two starting points that you can see over near the scientist. All of our walls have to be connected to one of those points. Now, the enemies need to get through to each of these three switches to power down our shield so that they can get access to destroy our experiment. Now, our job is to build a maze that will make it as difficult as possible for them to get to those three switches and make them take as much damage as possible. Now, you can see Bilal's placed a couple of towers here. All of our towers are the same. We've just got an option to place a tower or not. You don't choose what tower you place. But every time you end a wave, you get to make a choice. And you can see here that choice changes how our towers operate. You can increase your attack speed or you can affect your enemies. But underneath there, there's also a negative cost. Um, so we can see that if we choose this first one, the potent doodad of alacrity, it'll increase our attack speed for our towers, reduce our enemy life, but also add 4% enemy max life. So our towers do change and we can change our towers, but only through the adding up of these different choices. Each time we make a choice, these stats will keep stacking until our towers become quite different and our enemies become quite different. Now, Bilal, have we got any particular strategy or challenge in mind here, or are we just taking it as it comes again? You've got a challenge for me, I wouldn't mind, uh, but otherwise, let's kind of wait and see what they throw at us. I've already got some max life regenerated, so it's like I might be Right, eh? uh, having to deal with that uh, one way or another. We haven't so, seen many brutes yet. You, you up for a, a brute match? Um, I can try. It definitely doesn't work well with max life. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a good challenge. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good brutes. So uh, it's, I, I can't resist attack radius. I'll take it unless it. it's like instant game over. Uh, it's one of my favorite effects. So, nice. Yeah, look at that. It's a nice piece of so, so far in this um, demo version, um, we've got our standard villages, we've got hawks. The hawks are, are birds, as you might guess, um, that can fly over our maze. So they change things quite a bit. We've got hounds, we can see a hound here now, that are a lot speedier, but I think their life is a little bit less. And we've also got brutes, which are slower, but they're big chunky dudes who take a lot of damage. Now we've got a bunch of extra baddies planned as well, but even with the handful that we've got now, all these choices can add up to very different results. Among the things we're hoping to add, we want to have some scientists that come and um, mess around with our towers that stop them working for a little while. We're thinking of some, some clergy that'll come with, with healing powers that'll heal the people around them. What other ones have we got in the works, Bilal? We're going to have like a hero or a paladin that will... Uh, it'll force all the towers to attack itself. So we've got like a hound behind him that's going to sneak through as the towers attack that hero. That uh, sounds cool. Which is going to make it, make it complex. We were toying with the idea of a shrink ray the other day. I've got no idea if that's going to happen, but it sounds <laughs> cool. Who wouldn't like a shrink? Yeah. Uh, I've got a lot of attack radius this game. I'm really hoping for a Nova Core. Ah, uh, yes. It's a great Nova game. Hit us with any questions you have in the comments. Um, also, if you've got a sweet screenshot of your maze, whack it up in the, in the community section in our store. We'd love to see. Oh, okay. So, we, is that the first time we've gotten the second switch down, or have I just not been paying attention to switches? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been either. I'm always thinking about my choices. It's all about my choices, I think. Alrighty. So, we've got three switches here, guys and girls, and any anyone else who might be tuned in. Um, 
the, the villagers and the hounds and all these angry people need to come and switch all three of these switches before they can head for us at the end and destroy our experiment. Now, so far for Bilal, we've only had these people make it to two switches. Once they hit the third switch, they'll head straight for the shield and the monster. Oh, it looks like, oh, no, they almost got that third shield there. So things are getting a bit tense now. So, sorry, even I'm just going to pop in. Uh, Cody asked a question in the chat. What are the differences between the inputs? Oh, gosh, that hound almost... Sorry, I missed, I missed the last word there. What are the differences between... Uh, the difficulties, so uh -huh. night and normal. Uh, so, the, main, the, the two big differences, one is in the starting resources. So, in normal, you start with more wires and more towers. And... Uh, in Nightmare, it's quite a bit less, have a lot less of an initial maze, and you've only got three towers. It's kind of <laughs> very precarious situation. Um, and the other difference is that the enemies, they grow stronger faster. So every level, the enemies gain more health, more speed, and it's on per level, so that's the progressive difficulty. And everything's just more exponential in Nightmare mode. So your device will approach faster. Um, so yeah, that's the main difference. Hope that answers your question. Okay. So Ethan, I know you asked me to go brute strategy, but <laughs> I've not seen any. I don't think. Oh no, it's no all. option for brutes. Um, Fair enough. You so I might skip on it. Do what you like. Up. Yeah, we got some hands. Oh, there's one there, but it's it's late. <laughs> Let's go for some hands and noves. They almost got... Oh, they're getting that third switch now. Oh, yeah, that was I awfully gotta, close. i got to go full uh, panic mode here. <laughs> Can't let them get through. Um, so I think I'm going to want this one. Does it warrant a reclaim, or are you happy with your, your maze as it is? Remember, Oops. slow it down towards the end there so we can see what happens. Okay. No, no hands this time. Let's see if that works in our advantage. Not bad, didn't even get the third switch. Oh, that's going to help. That's a, that's a really good snow day. Uh, and I haven't got any dodge, so that's kind of noticeable. Do I already have any speed? Plus 10. Hmm. This one's really good too. Uh, let me just ask Cody if he is. So I might pass on the snow day and go for this one, just strictly thinking I think it'll help me win more. Um, yeah, nightmare difficult. So difficult. It's only way of pointing to point. Really struggling to Struggling to hear you again there, Bilal. Okay. Um, I was just saying nightmare difficulty is such a struggle. It's only way of 20 and I'm... Uh, already crunching numbers <laughs> about every choice is going to help a lot. All right, they've got the third switch. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. That's the end of that one. A quick one, quick loss. Yeah, have we got enough to salvage anything? Looks like you can get an, an eight-point doodad. Yeah, another one, but I might save up this time. I want to save up for a good one. And that was a quick game, so let's just jump straight into another one, I reckon. Uh, yeah, Nightmare is a struggle. Nightmare is a struggle. All right, should I reintroduce or is it too soon? Uh, you can you can talk over it. No, no harm in that. No worries. Got over 2,000 people now, which is incredible. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, people. Glad to have you here. Um, if you've just joined us, you're looking at Frankenstorm, which is a roguelite tower defense. In this tower defense, you need to build a maze to stop this horde of angry villagers from taking down our experiment. Now, the mazing's a little bit different because we can only build mazes that are connected to electricity via those two points near the scientists there. Another thing that makes this one unique is that we only have one type of tower that you can place 
But every time you make a choice at the end of a round, like these ones, it can beef up your tower and it can also beef up your enemies. So you need to very carefully weigh up your stats as you go to see what's going to make a difference for your defenses and what's going to make the enemy too strong. Um, and you get to a point where a single choice can be the difference from winning and losing. That suddenly the enemy's stats will be maxed out so much that there's nothing you can do. Now Bilal's playing here on nightmare mode, which is super tricky. So if you're a bit of a tower defense pro, give, give this one a shot. Um, if you're not quite that fancy, then um, have a go on normal mode. Even normal mode's quite challenging, but as you, as you play a few times, you should get better with each run. You'll start to learn what works and what doesn't, and you can also save up some of these doodads, some of the choices that you make along the way so that you can use them starting out in your next match. Now, we just had the angry mob get three of our switches. In order for them to win and for us to lose, they need to get to each of those switches and then make it all the way to the end. But they can't go to the end without powering down our shield with those switches. So you can see them here, they're going for switch number two. Every time they come, they're going to follow the path to get to those switches. And this path will be different in every game you play. Sometimes you might have all three switches clustered up in a, a little chunk and other times they're spread out. So it'll change the way you build your maze quite considerably. So our aim here is to make them run past our towers as many times as possible. If you can build a maze that'll get them to run past the towers four times, they can get maximum damage. But depending on the choices you get, you might get enemies like hawks coming, which means your maze doesn't matter at all because the hawks fly straight over your, ma your maze. So please have a look at the demo, give it a crack, let us know what you reckon. We're hoping to release this in about a month from now, just as a free game, but we're keen to get as much feedback as we can and make it as good as possible. Now, Bilal, how are we going here? Have you got a strategy in mind or are you just experimenting at this point? So this one was interesting. The first few choices all gave the enemies a lot of negative life. You can see it's only wave 14. They've already got minus 15% max life, which is really significant. That's the t their total life reduced by 15%, which is huge. So I'm definitely leaning into minus max life. And if they have less life, that means life regeneration is a safer choice because they're not regenerating as much life because they just don't have it. So that's like a, a combo there. I reduce their max life, which means the max life regeneration penalty is more manageable. Um, but the side effect of taking these choices early on is that they straight away got a big some enemy resistance, and that's really dangerous. So I need to watch out, not let that grow out of control. Because if they get that in the higher percentages, they're just going to start taking almost no damage from my shots. This is one of the stats that is like there's certain invisible threshold where if it reaches it, you'll just suddenly lose the game. Right. Because it's not taking damage from towers anymore so i need to really be careful with that one um in terms of enemy type i don't know yet um i think max life minus max life works well with brutes because then they just walk really slow and they don't actually have much life so it's kind of a win uh but we'll see what i get i might be forced into the choice uh because i haven't seen him yet well he's brute right now uh, alternatively uh, this is a That'll help me recover some of that life resistance problem I had. Uh, but let's try the brutes. Let's try the brutes then, because we haven't seen many brutes, so that'll be Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, now, one thing I want to shout out uh, also for the people watching the stream we do have a Discord channel uh, where we share all the progress with our development, and we also make so this is our most recent tower defense uh, through that games which uh, we're running we're kind of going down the, the tower defense rabbit hole uh, we've got lots of uh, ideas for tower defenses I, uh, growing up in the World 3 era I played lots of things uh, I want to make a lot more of them so if you're interested in following our progresses to make more tower defenses concepts 
Sorry, we've, we've lost you there a bit, Bilal. Okay. So, Maybe uh, it seems like we can hear you better between waves when there isn't as much going on. Um, so maybe tell okay. us that last bit between waves in a moment. If that's the case, I think it makes sense for me to turn the game volume down a bit. Yeah, do it. Uh, oh, here's more. But before I do the brutes, I'll just turn my my game volume a bit. It might help me be heard. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say one of the next TD ideas uh, I've got is is one that's inspired by Path of Exile. So Path of Exile has an interesting system where you can socket gems into your equipment, but uh, the gems, they completely change your abilities. It's not just like plus damage or something. It's just, it's that's actually where the abilities come from. And you can mix and match them in interesting ways. So I was thinking of stealing that uh, and morphing it into a tower defense. Cool. For one, I'm trying to mull my head for an online multiplayer tower defense, uh, which would be interesting. So, if those things sound like something you want to follow the progress of, then please join our Discord. You'll find the link on our Steam page uh, at the bottom of the Steam page. So, yeah, we'd love you to get involved. Um, yeah. Awesome. Oh, goodness, so much generation. I mean, I said it works together with minus life, but I'm not sure about this much. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> but I do, what can I do? Just go for it, lean into it. Um, plus enemy chance. We don't have any enemy triggers. That's not a bad one. This is a solid maze. Um, yeah, I'm happy with this maze. Look good. Yeah, we're seeing a bit more maze in this one than some of the last ones with the with the hawks and the hounds and stuff. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this one. I'm already going brutes, so this isn't much of a penalty when you're actually going for a specific strategy, and the actual effects are really strong. That hit damage and attack speed is great. Ah, oh, but I, I find it hard to resist attack rate. I'll resist it this time. I'll resist it. Are you thinking Novas again? Um, well, without much attack radius, Novas are dangerous because the Masterpiece makes your attack radius tiny. Uh. But I might go to, like, Chance, Chance and Hit Novas because they don't have the same penalty. Well, of course, they won't trigger as frequently. It's, you just got a chance instead of a guarantee. Um, we'll see what we get. Oh, uh, Novas are great with brutes because they're all smushed together. I wouldn't mind that. Third switch oh, no. down. Oh. We're getting close. What do we get now? Wait a sec, what can I do about this one? Wave 27. On nightmare mode this morning, we've been been going down pretty pretty reliably around the the 30 point. Though we had 155. But remember, you don't have to start at nightmare mode. Start on normal mode, you can start building up your collection of doodads to take into battle. I'm just adjusting my maze here. So I don't know if this is worth it. Well, we'll find out. I'll either lose immediately or this will pay <laughs> off. Um, wish me luck. <laughs> so now that the total maze is shorter, but they have to go into it an extra time. Cool. Two towers down. Yeah. All right, third tower going down. Okay, yeah, it paid off. Yeah, that was good. And now I get more wires. That's going to help a lot. So I'm going to grow it right back out. Nice. That, that was good. That should get us a few more waves. I think so. I think so. Roots for attack speed or more towers. I'll go for more towers. Can't go wrong with more towers. Um, and also, getting more towers and wires becomes more and more rare 
as you get later in the game, they're, they're pretty common early on and then they fall off as you get to higher waves. So that's another kind of incentive to pick them early. I didn't realise that one. That's good to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, more towers. Wave 30 looking good. So in this game, some explosion radius would be great because we've got a lot of enemy overlap going on. They're running over that middle part of the base. If I had some area of effect, that would be extremely powerful. Uh, it's just, it's pretty rare in this game. That's, that's different to a lot of tower defenses where you can say, just build a cannon tower and there you go, you've got area of effect. Uh, in this game, it's pretty hard to stack up, same as attack range. Um, so yeah, that's that's an interesting difference to normal. Got stun, even more towers. It's good mates, but I can see that health regen kicking in. Still they man strong. No one's getting out of the maze yet. Yeah. They managed to just slip out temporarily. You'll see the health regen flying, uh, giving them heaps back. So you know, it sounds like such a small amount, 2% per second. But if they just walk out of the maze for five seconds, then that's 10% of their life back straight away. So it's, it's a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Lots of towers. Fortunately, the brutes are too slow, so they're not escaping the maze at all. Alright, how do I want to tweak my maze now? Okay, he's out. So. I might, uh, I might do a little funny adjustment. Let's do that. Okay, so that's a bit of a, a tweak there. Um, yeah, that'll do for now. So we've tried to optimize the experience of building and rebuilding maze because it's pretty tricky when you have these constraints that everything needs to be linked together and you, you get your wires uh, slowly over time. Uh, it can be a bit tricky to refresh your maze as you go. Oh my, there's a lot walking through this time. Is this the end? Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, close one again. They had so little life. Almost made it. Almost. Um, yeah, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Not bad. Yeah, that was that was higher than some of the the last few. Now remember, this is nightmare mode, which is super hard. So wave thirty six is pretty good. Yeah. Um, normally you'd come to nightmare when you've got a big set of salvage doodads. I've only got two salvaged here, and they're not that great, honestly. They're hardly making any difference at all. <laughs> um, but yeah. You've got thirteen uh, points to spend. Is there anything worth buying this time, or are you going to save them up? I would have loved this one, but it's 16. Done. Um, so not quite there. So no, I'll probably save them up. You can see that the prices range from 8 to 18, 16, and 40. So the, the prices can be quite high, and that gives you a kind of dilemma, like should I spend them on, on something subpar right now, or do I want to save up for later? Uh, yeah, that's always a hard decision. So I think at this stage I'll save it for later, uh, just because there's nothing particularly exciting this time around. Cool beans. Another run? Um, yeah, let's do it. Alrighty. So if you're joining us, this is Frankenstorm, a roguelite tower defense game where you need to build a maze to stop a horde of angry villagers from coming and destroying your experiment. Now, Bilal's had a few runs this morning where we're playing on nightmare mode, which just makes things a little bit more intense. You start with less towers and less wires, and the enemies grow stronger much faster. 
we're opting for nightmare mode today just so we can play a bunch of different matches and show you a few different things but you probably want to start on regular normal mode when you get it when you get the demo please grab the demo and um, let us know what you think so far so you can see there's three switches here and these baddies need to go and turn off each of these switches before they can go to the end zone where the scientist and the monster are protected by the shield. As they turn off these switches it shuts down the power to the shield which is protecting our monster. So knowing that they're always going to have to travel to these three points we need to use our maze to make that as difficult as possible. Now we start off with a few wires and towers and the only way to get more is to choose them in between waves. Now we have the choice of a few things in between waves. Some of these will power up our towers, some of them will give us more towers or wires, but every choice also has a negative ramification. So on our next wave we'll have a look at some of those, but a lot of the choices that you'll have will make your towers faster or more powerful, or they might change the type of tower, but they'll also change the type of enemy and give your enemies extra abilities more life, more resistance, different things like that. So have a look at some of the choices Bilal's going to make. Every time, the choice could make or break the game for him, especially on nightmare mode here, where things are very sensitive. And if you're watching, please um, feel free to comment or ask us some questions. We'll do our best to answer them. And we'd love you to have a go of the demo. Give us some feedback before our proper release in about a month's time. Oh my. It's a hard choice. What are you weighing up there, Bilal? I had Hawks, which, which wouldn't be too bad, but I already have Brutes. So if I didn't have Brutes, I wouldn't have minded going with the Hawks this round. Um, but yeah, they don't really work together. I ended up picking the Dodge, which it's kind of the best of best right of the bad bunch, as they say. Um, yeah, just trying to grow my maze out a bit more. Got a lot of towers, but not many, not many uh, what wires. Sorry, I'm not lost for words. At the moment. <laughs> now I don't think I mentioned the the wires which make our our maze walls have to all be connected back to the source at the beginning there. You can see those two little terminals connected to the, the lightning rods. All of our mazes need to connect back to one of those, which can make things a little bit trickier, especially as the switches are placed randomly each time. If you've got switches that are really far away, you can't afford to make much of a maze to begin with. You need to keep choosing those wires so that you can actually make a maze. Getting, getting some wires now, which is good. Nice. Now, if you have a go at the demo, we'd love to see some of the mazes you create. I'm always particularly impressed if you can make it look cool as well. Bilal's kind of accidentally got a bit of a, a fist pattern happening here. If you get another, another finger at the top, you, you kind of have a fist shape. <laughs> I challenge you to make a recognizable image with your maze. <laughs> Interesting. I wouldn't have picked that out. <laughs> I reckon you could you could draw a good snail. Get a bit of a spiral for the shell. Some maze art. I'd love to see some maze art from our users. <laughs> Readjusting, trying to get my towers more in, uh, in a position where they can attack enemies for as long as they can. Uh. Oh, there's a bit of core. Can I get it? Not sure. 10% speed, 24% radius. I'm not sure I can manage it. I might <laughs> 
might be an instant lose if I take it. But give it a go. Give it a go. So far in nightmare mode, wave 20 is about where things start getting pretty hairy. All right, let's see what we can do here. I need to rebuild my maze for this one. Right. Um, He's going from scratch. So if I have Nolas, I really want to set him around a spiral so I can hit him as much as possible. Ah, here's a good chance for that snail. <laughs> I don't know how to draw a snail. <laughs> <laughs> well, you start with a spiral. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's try a snail. Oh, you, you, just, you just go for what works. I'll, I'll imagine it to be a snail. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. So the Novas don't shoot a projectile, they just have a an area of effect attack. Is that right, Bilal? Yeah, that's right. Oh my, I'm already out of wires. Oh. So that is much too large. <laughs> um, Baby snail. All right, what if I did it this fella here? Um, I wanted to loop around like a... See, this is a tricky one because all the switches are at the edges. So I can't do like a circle around them. Um, so I need to like actually add my own like center point somewhere. Which is not the easiest. But let's let's make all the corners smooth so I can pack the tight. Oh, how's our snail going? Sorry, I just had to chat to one of my kids. No worries at all. We're, we're all in lockdown here in New South Wales, so we're homeschooling, which is so much fun. <laughs> oh, I heard someone say, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've got our Novas now. Not sure about our snail. It's, it's more of a kind of a coral pattern. Call it one of those brain corals, sticking with the ocean theme. Brain corals, eh? Yeah. Just trying to think of the optimal position for these little nerve dudes. All right, let's see. Can I survive? Let's see what happens. Did I, did I dig myself into a hole? Oh, it's working. Not bad. Beautiful. All right. Well, I definitely can't do hawks here. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got one choice effectively. That's an interesting one. Um, more power, it's more wires. So now I'm at a position where if I ever get plus attack ratings, that's going to be a huge, huge win. Awesome. Um, so that's definitely what I'd love to see. Um, and of course, more power. So the reason the plus attack radius works, if you look, I've got minus 45% here. That's because the Nova Core reduced it by almost 70. Um, so that's this is the case with a lot of masterpieces. So Nova Core is called a masterpiece. It's got a really powerful effect. In this case, it replaced all of the standard attacks with a Nova instead. But it also has massive drawbacks. So reducing the attack radius by 70% and also the penalty down there, making the enemies faster and faster every wave. So it's a pretty big drawback. But for me, the biggest benefit I have is if I can reverse that drawback and get more attack radius, then then I'll get the Novas without the, the penalty, and it'll be very, very effective. So uh, that's what I'm keeping my eyes out on here. If I can get any, uh, any yeah. Those hands sure. are moving fast. Yes, they are. And it's like, do I want to make do I want four hounds? Or? Give, us, give us a level two speed now and again, just so we can see what's going on. You see that hound is so much faster than everything else, but I guess smoked quickly as well. Let's see. Ooh, double bonus. That's but let's, let's see. Let's do double Novas. So now I have a 7% chance to shoot two Novas, which would be a lot of fun. Oh, I love Novas. It's just so satisfying. <laughs> uh, I'll do the power. Oh, 
Speedy hands. Beautiful. Not bad. Not getting to that third switch yet. Oh, more explosion radius. Yes, that's going to be great. So now, once I pick this one, oh yeah, I can definitely pick that one. So now you're going to start seeing some extremely big Novas every now and then. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So now that's going to cover almost the entire maze because we've got this, what did you call it? Brain coral? Yeah, on. it's our brain coral maze. So, yeah, when we get that extra explosion radius, it's going to cover almost the entire maze, hit everyone in there, which is great. We're also working on a, a children's sea creature game at the moment, so that might explain some of my sea creature brain. <laughs> Everything looks like sun through the ocean. <laughs> oh my. Um, so an interesting quirk with this tower defense, which is a little less common, uh, is that the enemies can move diagonally in between walls. So you can see there, I've got two walls on diagonals but the enemies to squeeze through, which is uh, not very common, but I think it made sense for the wire theme, and it lets you do these kinds of nicer tight mazes that I've got going on here. So now I'm going to get the extra, the chaos here. It's going to buff my enemies, they're going to dodge more often and such, but it's also going to buff my towers, and so they get those extra effects like that explosion radius and the extra Nova more often too, so uh, Chaos is good fun. <laughs> it is indeed. I like to choose the Chaos. Here, if I get the stun chance as well, that'll be cool. Um, nice. I, I, I might go for the damage, actually, not the stun. Um, so here they've got some max life regeneration, but since this is like a one-shot maze, they're not going to do the in and out four time shenanigans with this maze. They just go in and go out. If I don't kill them, it's game over. So with that setup, <coughs> stacking as much damage as you can to just kill them before the get out the other side works, and uh, the health regeneration isn't as effective because they're not surviving so long. Uh, they would they went in the maze four times. Good. Wave 37. This is one of our highest today on Nightmare Mode, I think. Not our highest, but it's up there. The <laughs> oh, yes. Attack radius. Awesome. Beautiful. Let's see if we can beat our, our 55s that you got earlier. Oh, yeah. You see immediately the nerves are noticeably bigger. So, uh, okay. what do I want here? These two cancel each other out. I don't think I want to give them dodge chance. So I'm going to take one of the ones that just cancel out completely. <laughs> Seems like a kind of lazy choice, but <laughs> a safe choice. Have we had that third switch go down yet? Uh, they didn't. They didn't get it just then. It's a nice long way away. Let's go for chaos. Let's go for chaos. Let's one. More energy shield and fight for explosion radius. Let's do it. Explosion radius is great uh, when you have Nobus. So it makes all the Nobus bigger. So they're reaching that last one now. Well, that time, seems like I made the right choice. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. And if you like what you see and you want to see more tower defense work that we're doing, feel free to join our Discord. The link is in the Steam page of the About This Game section. So, yeah, ask away. Uh, and we'll get we'll make some more tower defenses. We're, I'm, I'm all about tower defenses. So, Join in our journey there. And a lot of 
safe choices here, which is lucky. Now, the, is the demo just live for a few more days this time around? Yeah, that's right. It's live as part of the Steam Next Fest. We'll be taking it down sometime after that, not too long after. Um, so if the demo is something you're interested in and you want to jump on that sooner or later. Um, but the full release will be towards the end of the month. Not so far away. It won't be too long. We're just trying to get as much feedback as we can. So that the game best be before that point. And I think it's been really helpful. We've learned a lot watching people play it. So yeah, if you want to get involved, please do let us know. There you go. Goodness, it's the third time I've got this two hawks and one other version. Doesn't leave me much choice. Um, or does it? Maybe hawks are not too bad here. Oh, those dogs are hyperspeed. Slow speedy down, dudes. Damage is there, so it's actually a good situation. Um, I don't mind the hounds that much on stage. He's still doing well. No one's gotten out of that maze yet. Well, as Wave. soon as they do, it's over. So <laughs> <laughs> Wave 53, we're getting close to your best on stream today. Well, no, well, no, it's over. That's it. Ah! Uh. Dang it! <laughs> I shouldn't have spoke. Ah, uh, <laughs> straight away. Yeah, so it's a pretty savage game. Um, but yeah, Ethan, do you reckon we should call it here? Yeah, happy to happy to finish it there. Um, if anyone's got any questions, hit us with them now before we go off. But um, yeah, thanks very much for having a look. Great to have some people on here, and you can jump on our Discord as Bilal mentioned earlier. There should be a link on our store page. We'd love to hear from you and see some of your maze screenshots. Awesome.